Uh, go to our course companion website. Okay, my machine runs quite slow. Okay, we come to our code companion website, GitHub 352. Check the labs, lab 06. Okay, in this lab, we are going to identify spam emails with the orange. You can use the orange on your Windows or Mac OS or Linux, any system you feel com comfortable. Here we learn how to identify spam emails with the various classifiers in orange. Here are eight of them. Logistic regression, random forest, soft max regression, kidneys to the neighbors, no you bayers, support back machines, classification tree, majority classifier, neural network. If you want to learn more, you can go to these uh, links to find an explanation about these uh, classifiers. So your report, you just uh, report the process, you complete the tasks, add some key screenshots. Other information you can find from here. Actually, for this uh, lab, the major part is find and download the data set from spam, ham, emails for, mach for machine learning and pre-process the data set so it can be used uh, in origin. Once you have those data set, this uh, part is easy. Just like uh, in one of the tutorial, the official tutorial to classify those uh, tails into two categories, those uh, magic tails and uh, animal tails. So you can use that one as a uh, as a reference to complete this lab. So this lab we only, the new thing, the new stuff is to download the uh, email data set and uh, pre-process. So before we go to download the data set and uh, pre-process the data sets, I would like to show you that uh, which lab, which official tutorial is used for the reference here. When you check the official website, the tutorial, or oh, Orange, you can go to uh, this channel, find the playlist, here, the text money. In this text money, we have a text pre-processing, text clustering, text class classification. So for text pre-processing, you need this tool. How to import text document? You have practice one with to import Kennedy's speeches by just put his speeches into folders. If you put them into two folders, Right, one photo for uh, his speeches. Uh, spoken before 1961 and uh, others after 1961. So in our spam emails, you can follow this one. You put those spam email into one folder called spam and uh, those uh, good emails put, put inside a folder called ham. So this is uh, one way. The other way, you, you can uh, download those emails and uh, 
convert them into the format recognizable by Ology as that tab format. We can see them in this uh, text text uh, preprocessing. You will need uh, to add some stop words and the tokenization and so on. Also, you need to get bag of words. After you get a bag of words, then you can do wireless uh, classification. So you can see uh, this uh, lab is uh, quite easy here. When we check this uh, text preprocessing, right? We use a uh, corpse and corpse view to view those uh, contents. Then we can use a uh, word cloud, word cloud, and uh, corpse view is used to investigate the documents we have. And this preprocess, we can do the transformation, tokenization, filtering, and so on. After the pre-processing, you can view the word cloud again or use Corpse Viewer. But uh, the, main uh, the main purpose after this pre-processing is we want to supply the bagger words into various classifiers. Go to this classification here. You check this uh, part. After you pre-process the text, the documents, you supply them into a bag of words. Then you can use a classifier, for example, logistic regression to classify the documents. For example, this girl uses a monogram, nonogram to view the significance of these words of these words used to classify the documents. Here, how do you classify the do document? Use a test and score. You use this test and score. Add a classifier here. In our lab, you are, you are asked to add eight classifier here. Connect them to this test and score. And you will find all these uh, more model Matrix here, A AOC, CAF1, Precision, and Recall. So you will get a table. Here, there is only one, Logistic Regression. Here are the scores for that Logistic Regression. Then you can test a new email to determine whether it's a spam email or a ham email. You use this prediction. And the prediction, you can also connect lots of uh, classifiers to this prediction. So you need to pay attention to the difference to the test score and that prediction here. You, when you check this one, for those uh, test score, your classifier only connect to this test and score. They are evaluated on this uh, pre-processed bag of words. You will get a table of the scores, metrics about all those classifiers. For this, uh, here, for you want to do the prediction, your classifier is uh, learned from the bag of words, then it serves as a classifier to this prediction. This prediction can predict the unlearned, a new data set to determine whether it's a, a ham or a spam. In our lab, you only need to add eight classifiers here and eight classifiers here, and that's done. What other structure is exactly the same? We have a pre-process, process widget, back of words widget, then come to this test score, and it is a prediction. In your COPS, the only task you need to uh, spend more effort is uh, to pre-process, download that email data sets and pre-process them, make sure they can be accepted by this uh, COPS. Actually, uh, maybe we can go to the COPS to see whether there are any uh, email data sets 
So that's the lab, how do you complete here? It's an easy lab, right? So I will uh, just re-demonstrate the girl demonstrated and add more classifiers. Then we will discuss how to download those emails and pre-process them. Make sure you have that uh, text mining add-on. Here you can see the text could be extracted from Wikipedia, Twitter, those uh, sources. Here we only need to add a uh, corpse, there's a data source. Here you can find the data source here. So you can convert your email into this tab format. We can go there to see that uh, tab format. Oops, it uh, does not bring me to that folder. So I need to uh, use my file explorer, go to that folder. Program files, orange, the data set. So, what is the data set? We can search from here. Search star.tab. Okay, now you see that Anderson.tab and that uh, green tails selected tab. When you right click open with a text editor, you can see how to organize this uh, text here. We have a AOC topic title, abstract content, ATO numeric, ATO type. These are the attributes. Right now, here are those uh, types. Here are the class, the target. Here you see the target, whether this is a uh, animal tail or tails or magic. There are only two classes, even though they are text, but you see it uses this uh, discrete to represent the classes. But for this title, it uses string, abstract string, container string. ATO string numeric is a discrete. ATO tab is a discrete. You can go to the right side to have a look and put an L. Here, there is a number, and then these arrows, they are just tabs. So you can format your email data set like this. Here is one way, the other way. It's like that uh, Kennedy's speech. Let's see which way is sort of. Here we have this green tails selected, right? So you only need to put your email data set, put it here, browser, create, put it here. You see the title available. Here we have these uh, variables. Text feature content ignored uh, text features. So if only the content is used. You see other features they are ignored. The title, abstract, ATO number, they are ignored. When you check here, you see uh, 44 documents, one, four text features, one other features. 
the discrete class with the two values for classification. And we can f find uh, that. Oops, maybe I, it's better. I leave it open here. Yeah. Here you check this uh, one matter. What does this matter mean? Matter for matter features, they are just ignored. And also, we can check this include x2. This is this uh, content, right? We check this arrow number, arrows, one, two, three, come to the content, one, two, three, come to this include x2. OK, once we have the data set, for example, your email, then you can go to a The text preprocess, preprocess text. In this preprocess text, you can determine this stuff: remove accents, remove HTML or URL for email. Maybe it's okay to re remove those uh, HTML. No, not not really. For spam emails, they may contain links, so let's just keep this stuff right. Then for tokenization, we just uh, work on words. This means a uh, word. Now stop words, we can add some stop words. What kind of words do you think is not important to identify spam emails or non-spam emails you can add here? For example, my stop text, is this one is just the girl demonstrated the cold word short said those kind of words. And the field, this is the filtering. So you can, uh, you can also try this stuff. Yeah, up the art tool does not show up. After you pre-process the text, you go to bag of words. Back of words, and your term frequency, doctor frequency, regularization, whether you want to choose, you can uh, practice this stuff to see whether you can have higher accuracy to identify spam emails or non-spam emails. Here are some options you can choose to practice. Now you see this one, you have two options, this one, you have uh, three option, this one you have uh, two option. So together, how many com combination do you have? Now three, uh, two times here, three times, two times, two, you will get 12 combination. You may practice uh, two or three combination. After that, we can go to a uh, score, test and score, right? Test and score is used to measure the classifier's performance. So we can add uh, logistic regression supplied here. How many do we require? Here the first one Logistic regression, the second one, random forest uh, software regression, so, so we can arrange this one. Here, then I find the next one, random, oops, random forest. And uh, soft max does not so max does not show up, show up here. The self organization map. So soft max 
max regression does not show. Yeah, we just have regression, we have logistic regression, linear regression. This is soft max regression. Let me check this one. Here there are also two regularization type can be used, but we didn't find that a soft max regression. But in orange, when you use code, there, there is this uh, soft max regression. So let's see. Orange three soft max regression. It does not show up this one. I forgot why I found that software is regression. I think it's inside the document. When I check this uh, reference, you can find all the other classifiers. Right? Here, this cla these classifiers, you see here is a software regression. It can be used in the code. Here, software regression, learner. But we didn't find in, in this uh, GUI. So we can push here to see how many we can find. We just tried one more one. Simple random forest. No, we don't have. Then go to this. Uh, so for max, we, we didn't find the k list. Here we have this uh, KNN, is it is a k list uh, neighbor. So we can draw a line, come here. Then check naive players. We have naive players here. Let's see how many we will qualify. Support vector machine, SVM. And uh, that uh, linear support vector machine. Here, when you check this linear, we only have a linear regression, linear project, don't have linear as SVM. Then we go inside. To See, SVM, we have SVM type. Here we have the stuff linear. You can choose the kernel linear support vector machine by changing these options linear, polynomial, RBF. These are the kernel for the SVM. So then we come to this uh, classification tree, which have type of tree. Here you see a tree, right? You want to see a tree. There's a class for classification. We have a tree here now. Simple tree. When we type a tree, we didn't see that simple tree. But we don't have that simple tree. Majority classifier. We may type a MA, no majority. Here we type a classifier. We have polynomial classification, but we, we didn't see a majority cla classification. Oops. Okay, what this arrow says. In this case, uh, let's just remove it. Then we come to the uh, neural network. Neural network. Over here. 
common to hell hell seven so it looks like uh, i need to change your uh, here i will remove one of them that uh, which one we didn't find we will remove that one is that a soft uh, max uh, regression so i will remove that one and also this majority classification so here are these uh we can all connect to this one It takes some time. Once it's done, you can draw your conclusion on the classifications. Here, the, the model evaluation matrix. This is just a lab, you can see it takes some time. On the real world, it may take months, even years to complete. Okay, it's completed. Now you can check. Here, you can check the uh, evaluation with these uh, metrics. So you can put this inside your report. Model comparison by AOC. You can sort this decrease, decreasing order. You see this one has the logistic uh, regression has the highest uh, recall. For precision, again, logistic regression has the highest precision. 
F1 from M1 is also a logistic regression. Classification accuracy is still, uh, you see the top three. Uh, the neural network, the AOC score is highest. You can see the top three or top four. They are almost all there. Okay, this is uh, for the model evaluation. The next step is to do a prediction. To the prediction, we know we need to add the prediction model. That is a prediction widget. Then we need to uh, use the bag of walls to train a classifier and send it, uh, send this model to this pre prediction. How do we predict? You need to add a new emails. Inside a COPS. Here, for example, I, I want to choose, just as the girl demonstrated with this understand dot tab. Then we get the prediction here. There are three stories in that understand corpus. And you see it's predicted as tells the magic this one, tells the magic this one, tells the magic. Here you see the prediction. They'll predict all as tells the magic. You see the probability. This two or one. This one is uh, close to 80%. Right? But animals tells the probability is quite low. And this is, uh, is different from the girl demonstrated. In the girl's demonstration, this uh, ugly duckling is the uh, animal tail, and the other two, the tails are magic. So you need to add all these uh, models here connect them to this uh, prediction to see which one has the highest prediction uh, accuracy here. Let's try another one, for example, uh, the neural network. Here you can see the prediction based on neural network and the logistic regression. They all predict these three stories as tales or magician. Right? Here you see the probability. Oh, this is how you need to complete the lab. You only need to change it. this uh, corpus here, this file to your email set, and uh, this one, another email set. You can choose uh, three or four emails to see whether they are spam email or spam email. You can choose from those uh, email data set. Here are seven of them, so you are only required to compare these seven of them. I will revise the description here. So now let's uh, come to the second part. The second part is uh, how do we download the email and uh, change their format to the format can be recognized by 
orange. Here for orange, there is another way to see in the demonstration. Import here text. Uh, import text documents, how to import them. You will create a folder that contains all of the emails. Yeah, just like this. Organize them into two folders. In this uh, video, this girl demonstrated uh, clustering. Check this part. Hierarchical uh, clustering. And in that, I import documents. She organized those uh, files into two folders. Okay, where could we download the email? The email data set come to uh, this link list. Capital email message data set. Use a spam based data set. I can choose any one you want. Let's uh, have a look. Short message spam collection. Email spam classification. Not a data set. Here, it is just a data set from third place. These are just uh, some post. Spam and ham. From this uh, data source. You can search uh, here. It says uh, notebook. You check the de data to search uh, spam, or we just search email. Let's search spam email. Here in the data set, email spam. Right, the data sets comments. We only check the data sets. In this data set, it uh, has uh, 12 megabytes. You can see it uh, organized into two folders, ham and spam. So we can download this one. Okay, now it's completed. Inside this archive, as we extract here. Pam and spam. So maybe it's better to create a folder here. Emails and put this uh, ham spam. So, what is a uh, ham spam? Just the 
what's inside this one. So it has a ham, spam, ham, spam, which means still the confused or confusing emails. And this is a ham and spam. Ham and spam. It looks like they, they are just uh, this ham spam and spam. It contains this, this ham and this spam. We go inside. I see ham and spam. Here are the, the hams. We can just open one to have a look. I see from delivered to received and so on. Just consider this app or as the content of the email. I'm going to delete this middle one because it just contains the ham and the spam. Right now, go to your orange. You can create a new one. Maybe the document import import documents, right? To the folder emails. It says uh, zero documents. So anyone knows the problem here? Inside these emails, I have ham and I have spam. Why I cannot recognize? I, I click uh, reload. It, it just uh, will not load anything. The emails aren't in the correct format. The emails are not in the correct format. As the emails, we only need as a text. Here, as you check this one, this is a txt file, right? Here, it organizes as a txt file. But in mine, here you see none of them is a txt file. So we need to rename all these files into txt files. We can have a try. First, we just uh, rename, for example, rename the first two to see whether they will be recognized. So, in order to change it, you need to show the file name extension to change the extension. Okay, now I changed one, you see the icon is changed. Can I change another one? .txt. So I go back to that uh, hams. I was a uh, rename tool to have a look. Okay, now I have four text file. Now you see I have four documents and two categories. So after this step, you can follow this uh, this one. You go to a pre word text preprocessor, then use a bag of words, right? Preprocess text. Inside you can uh, change this uh, settings. Then go to a bag of words. After a bag of words, you can do a classification. Here 
porque a nossa de usar tem que ser da back of boss aqui ó não you can't do for example we can't do classification Oops, it's not as strong this way. Test and a score. Here, when we do test and a score, the back of was connected to the test and score and with the, the classifiers. So I need to check the arrow. So what's this arrow? Number of photos exceed the data sets. I have only two photos here. But emails, I have only a dozen. Here I'm in a spam. So what is the uh, arrow happen? We need to clean those files. Number of folders exceed the data set. Here there's a number of folders. Because of the data set, we have only two files. So it's too small. We only need to uh, add more files. So any quick way to change uh, to add an extension to all these files. Anyone else? For example, if I select all them, try rename. How could we just add a txt at the end? Anyone else how to rename multiple files? So we can always uh, ask over, right? Rename multiple files on Windows. There are tools can be used to rename uh, multiple files. Batch rename multiple files on Windows 10. Here. Yeah. We can use the command line. With this rename tab. So it's a jump of one to one. Something new. And I want to rename multiple files at once. Select all of them. Rename, it will add a number one, two, three, and so on. If you like that way, you can choose that, that one. The, the command line, for this com command line, old file name, new file name, extension, rename of file, and press enter. This is just a uh, rename. Well, we want to rename multiple here. To rename multiple, we use this uh, method. Rename. Okay, we can do it uh, like this. Here, go to our file folder here. I want to view it as a list. Oh, here are so many files. It will take lots of time for us to pre-process. I would like to just leave, for example, 10, 10 or 20 
I press Shift key, then press right click, and see there is an open PowerShell window here. I can run that uh, rename for any files store just to uh, store dot txt to see where it work. Cannot process on because the value of pass is not valid. Let's try CMD. Okay, you see, it looks good. Or change it to dot txt with the number. Right now I have uh, because uh, at the beginning those those files are prefixed with the uh, second numbers. So now I can delete some of them. Just leave, for example, twenty. So I will leave uh, because I want to uh, run it fast. But so your accuracy will not be high because the more data your model will become more accuracy, more accurate right here. Go to this here. Then we go to this uh, spam. This spam, I want to also leave just uh, like number 20 of them. So in your lab, I would add a requirement. You need uh, 50 of each. In the real world, they use uh, thousands or millions of files to train their model. So I go to my uh, spam folder, then try this rename. It's done. I don't like those two long name files. Okay, now we go back to our. We reload this one. Some files couldn't be read. So we need to find those files and delete them. Okay, this is a one way we use the import documents. The other way, we need to convert those email to tab files. So which way is up to you? Just choose the one convenient to you. Now let's check this test and score. You can see its accuracy. Quite high. You will want to do prediction. Here I just uh, completed this uh, whole part. And it's your turn to do the lab. Uh, we will skip the 10 minutes break because we just leave uh, have a little bit left. Prediction. 
in this prediction, how do we do that? We need to uh, add here. For example, I want to add a random forest. I need to train first. Then go to this prediction. Now we need a new data set. Oops, I should leave some emails. So we can go back. So don't use the trained data set for prediction. Prediction always use uh, new emails. Let's see whether it can predict predict uh, correctly. Okay, now I will choose some hams and some spams. We don't know which one used, which one didn't use. Maybe those later one not used. So we can delete those brief. brief one. We just copy two of them. I want to copy three of them. Control C. There are three hems. Go here and create a photo, create a test for predict prediction. Inside this prediction, I have some uh, hems and some spam. So what the, uh, I copied, here is ham, okay, copy three ham. Then I copy three uh, spam. Go back to this uh, prediction here. Then I rename this stuff. Now command then I rename start to start of txt. Now look, looks good. Then I cd to a uh, that ham. Try the name again. Try LS or try DR. So now you see we have all the test files. We can add a new import document here. Open that uh, prediction folder here. One file couldn't uh, be read, so we may check the file and uh, remove it. But it didn't show me which file. File documents, one file not read. Report. Maybe it's inside this report file. We can check it. Here, we need to uh, pre process text again. You can change those option. Then go to back of words. 
then you want to predict them. Yeah, you can check those uh, emails. Spam. For this uh, predictor, this model, users, this accuracy, this is good or not, or not good. Here you can see they're all predicted as a spam, 1.0, right? Actually, they're not all spams. I have some spams, have some hams. So this prediction is not good. Now, but in the training, you can see it looks quite good, but in your real world prediction, it's not good. In this case, you need to adjust the settings of those mod models of these widgets to have a look. Uh, we, you know, we don't use the, all this pre-process, just uh, predict directly. Predict directly, and then we have a uh, check spam. Here again, they are still all considered as spam. Um, none of them are considered as a as a ham. Right? You see the probability. So now you see this prediction is not good because it cannot uh, predict uh, correctly. So this is the lab, and you need to change the uh, settings to see. It which one you can get a higher score. Certainly, if you use the email just from the training side, you will get 100%. So that's not the real application. In real world, we want to train our model with some known spams and uh, hams to predict some new incoming email to determine whether the spams or hams. So this is the lab. 